Well, Happy New Year to you. It is January the 6th, and here you are in Jim's fish room again, again the living room. This is the corner tank, which has got a lot of color going to it right now. A lot of the uh, orange of platys and swordtails growing up, some from that experiment we had this summer with a half barrel pond outside, capturing a number of babies there and uh, moving them into this tank. Uh, also moved over the angelfish from the bow tank to here. They seem to be doing better in this tank. Don't know why, but they are. And uh, as usual, the plant growth is continuing to be extraordinary. And this has been going on for a good long while now. I mean, we're talking about, uh, is it two years? I mean, sometimes you get plant growth that uh, works for a while and then uh, they die off. Well, that has not been the case here with that fertilization program. And so trying to capture more of the depth of this tank. It goes back quite deeply and the Amazon swords that I've replanted to give some sense of depth to that center fold and just move over two of the smaller Amazon swords from the bow tank into here and I'm taking it down deep into this tank that goes back oh probably 36 inches. It's a 55 gallon tank or something like that. And uh, the Amazon swords seem to be doing so well with that fertilization program as you'll see in the bow tank in just a minute. But meanwhile uh, the fish are having a ball on some of the plant, uh, uh, the algae tabs that I put in there earlier. As you can see here in the corner, my goodness. That tricolored shark that you see right in the center is one of two that are doing very well. Uh, the red tail shark that I always feature, there's three of them in this particular tank. And uh, two of them are of this size and then there's a smaller one. I haven't had that much luck with multiple red tail sharks in a tank before but I think it's got enough planting that they get away from each other when they chase each other. Uh, the other thing you'll see here uh, off to the right is the two dwarf blue gouramis. And one of the nice things that I have going for me is a wife who enjoys the hobby as much as I do and has gotten very good at being able to select fish uh, by their quality. And so uh, for Christmas she said your Christmas present is in the tanks. And I went and looked and sure enough uh, there was a couple catfish, these two iridescent blue gouramis, dwarf gouramis, that just are doing just fine. They haven't had good luck with them in the past, but uh, they seem to be doing okay here, as you can see the two of them in this particular frame. Uh, the angelfish continue to do well, especially the jet black angels, and then those other two that have, there's actually four angels in here. and. Uh, the other two are malted with a blue tinge in them. And here you see that other black angel coming forward right there. The uh, other interesting thing here is the Madagascar lace plant that I've been concerned because the leaves as they're forming stay pretty narrow. They're starting to broaden out a little bit. But as you're going to see in just a second over at the bow tank, uh, what's going on over there is extraordinary. And so, what was the third fish you got besides the bugaramis, the uh, catfish, and, um, huh, I forget what the rest of that was. But anyway, a lot of color here. We're going to try and keep this video on the short side. And so I just wanted to catch up quickly. Oh, that's what it was, it was neon. She got ten more neons that we put over in the other tank. And so, uh, things are going well here, and let's move on over. And here's that boat tank. Again, the plant's doing amazingly well, especially enjoying the corkscrew valve that you see right here, thriving nicely in this particular tank. And then I'll have to move the camera up closer in just a minute to show you really what's going on with the Amazon sword back there. It's hard to see how big that's become, but I was in straightening this out yesterday and I got to tell you, it's got at least 30 or more leaves on it. 
and I tried to move it. I thought maybe I'll put it over in the corner tank. Uh, the root system is so strong in here that I could not, without totally upsetting the whole tank, uh, do anything with it. And so that's doing amazingly well. And over in this corner here, uh, you see the valves that are, or maybe they're sags, the long uh, leafed plants right there. And they were growing up to the top and covering the surface and blocking the light. So I thought, huh, I wonder if I took a pair of scissors and trimmed them off so they'd be shorter, would it get more light in there? Well, when I got into it, I realized that it wasn't them that was causing the problem. The amazing thing was the Madagascar lace plant that you're looking at right here was growing into that very dense planting area. And the more I pulled those leaves out, I realized this Madagascar lace plant, even after I've trimmed many of the leaves off it, has got easily 20 stems on it. And the leaves are huge. And so uh, <laughs> they, they would well be planted in an even bigger tank. But for right now, I am totally impressed that they're lasting as long. And there's that school of neons that I told you my wife got me for Christmas. And they're doing beautifully, especially with this planting, as you can see. And then there's that red-tailed shark, Whoop, just going back behind the plants there. I love the red-tailed shark. And uh, everybody else is doing really fine here. Like I said, I was able to move a lot of the planting back from the front so it opened up the front there. And uh, that really made for a nice schooling effect with those neons. And so we're really enjoying that coloration that they bring to any tank, especially with that dense green in the background. Everybody's doing well here. You see the two uh, pearl gouramis going after each other. Uh, the big blue gouramis, not the dwarf gouramis over here, seem to be holding their own. And there's a lot of other fish back in the plantings that uh, you don't get to see too much of. But when they do come out, you enjoy them. And uh, there's a small betta up here now. Oh, there she is. There he is, rather. Let's see if we can capture it for you. There you go. Very good. Pam, that was the other fish that Pam got. A small, a young uh, male betta. Whoops. There we go. And so he likes to hang out in that heavy growth up there out of the flow of the water uh, from the filter. So anyway, real quick, that's an update of what's going on here. Really have to do something about the two plecos that are getting really big in here. Uh, last time, as you remember, I had to take the tank apart in order to get the pleco out of there. It got so big that I need to take it to Hidden Reef uh, for the credit. And uh, you can see how big the pleco is getting here. That's the bigger of the two. And they do a nice job of keeping the algae down. Uh, but. Uh, they're getting to the point where I've got to do something. And finally, I, I've really come to appreciate the advice that some people give of don't get these plecos because they are going to grow big. And I know they can get huge in a, uh, uh, in a big uh, showcase of an aquarium uh, center, for example. Um, what am I thinking of? Like down in Maryland, the, the aquarium uh, showcase there. They, they get huge. Anyway, their day is coming, and I don't know how much of a credit I got last time. I'll know when I get there. So meanwhile, just loving the Madagascar lace plant. That, that is such a, I think they call it the queen of the aquarium plants. And I certainly am enjoying it. And you can see the growth here. Uh, usually it fades away to nothing, and uh, this one is not doing that at all. So. All right, quick tour of the office tank coming up. I promised you a view of that Amazon sword that we saw behind the corkscrew valve in the earlier segment. And uh, catfish are doing really nicely here. You can see three of the young ones right here. But anyway, my point being, there's that Amazon sword which I counted at least 30 leaves on 
Uh, it could really be the queen plant in here if it weren't for the fact that there's another one right over here doing equally well. And so whatever is going on with this fertilization program is very good for the Amazon sword plants. And of course, as I said, the Madagascar lace plant just fills up this whole corner of the tank now. And as you may be able to see the stems going down to the base of the plant, there's at least 20 beautiful stems of Madagascar lace plant in this corner of the tank. And then we have yet a small Amazon sword. They seem to come in different sizes, and so uh, those are obviously big ones in the background. And then this young one stays pretty small, which is helpful when you go into the other tank. But again, this Amazon sword here has got easily 40 to 50 plant, uh, leaves on it. Amazing, amazing to me. So anyway, that's just uh, giving you a close-up on a couple of the featured plants here. Here in the office tank, we've got a lot of coloration too, but I'm very pleased with what you're seeing here in the black mollies. Uh, the female black molly was just there in front. And I uh, picked these two up. Liretail black mollies, there's a nice pair in here uh, that really caught my attention. There's a pair of half black, but there's the male, I believe. Isn't it beautiful? Every once in a while in one of these small fish stores you find an opportunity like that. I love black mollies, as I do the red-tailed sharks, and uh, they don't tend to last too long. I did have a, a good year of some real nice growth, and they populated uh, the main tank with many many and then they fade out over time and these two are nice and young and uh, you may see some of the babies now that are starting to grow up against this uh, Amazon sword and there's I can't tell right offhand whether that's the male or the female that you just saw behind that Amazon sword plant But she is beautiful and she's very pregnant and there's been some babies born here. This tank is not meant to be a breeding tank but it's got enough uh, protection with the many plants in there that I move some pregnant females in here so that their babies have a chance of thriving. And so along with some colorful guppies there's uh, now some sword tails where I moved them in here to give birth and uh, they've grown very big as you can see with this red sword tail right there to the left of center and she's given birth a couple times and grown very nicely and uh, we have a male in here too and also we have those two clown loaches in here that have gotten really big you're not going to see them they only come out when I put some uh, algae tabs down here but we've got plenty of plant growth that the babies are protected in and so that's working out well. Here's that black molly again. That's the male. And the female looks identical except for showing a female. And uh, doing very well. The guppies in here are continuing to thrive. And as you may be able to see in the background, there's just lots and lots of babies in this tank uh, growing out. And as they get to a certain size, I throw them out into that corner tank, give them more room to grow out and uh, getting to the point now where you could honestly say the tank seems to be overcrowded and yeah it is. You can see the Amazon sword plant doing so well here. I just uh, cleared out a bunch of this I call it a furry plant. It's, uh, I don't know what it is but it grows really nice right now. It's amazing to me over time how certain plants thrive for some period of months and then they fade away like the cabamba in that corner tank was overtaking the tank at one point in time uh, well, this plant now has overtaken that tank and this tank, and I have to keep cutting it back and bringing it back down to the bottom so it doesn't crowd out the, the light. But it was actually working perfectly for the baby fish because they get in uh, those, whatever you call them, uh, I call them the, the 
the the thin branches of this thing uh, that protects them so that they can be feeding on the small food there and the other fish leave them alone. So anyway, that's what's going on here. Amazon Sword's doing amazingly well. Uh, keeping it short, wishing you a happy new year. Hope you're having as much success with your own tanks as Jim is here. Till next time.